I'll hand over to, uh, I'll stop sharing and hand over to Marco. Okay, I guess it looks good. Okay, I hope you can all hear me. Good morning for to all the people here in the room and obviously also to the people connected. Uh, today I'm going to give you uh, an overview of what we have been doing recently, especially on top of version 10 uh, with the workload automation, uh, and what, what's coming, uh, we have in plan uh, a new release this year. We will uh, modify our uh, development process and uh, embrace the continuous delivery uh, model. So there are uh, lots of news coming, coming up. So I will just start. Uh, um, talking about uh, uh, reminding you our value proposition. This is a very short intro. Um, as you know, we uh, have this uh, mantra of automating more, automating better. Uh, this is because uh, I think in the last years we, we did a, a shift. So the uh, what used to be a traditional workload automation tool now it's more uh, uh, an orchestration, a, gener a generic orchestration tool. And uh, uh, I think that the central point of this, uh, I mean, the single point of control through our web user interface, a graphical interface, uh, our uh, prediction on the, on the execution of the workloads, all these are kind of core features of the product that have been there for a while. But maybe what changed uh, uh, recently is the automation hub. So the fact that we are investing a lot of new integrations and uh, expanding that to a very high number. And in the, in the session of this afternoon, I will show you some use cases, uh, some examples of how you can uh, use all those integrations. And this is uh, uh, making our product uh, much more a generic orchestration tool because we can uh, uh, actually orchestrate a lot of uh, uh, different applications in a very simple way with the job plugins. So the, the value proposition is all around these three main points, the, 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 the ecosystem of integrations, the single point of control or from our dynamic workload console that has been recently um, revamped in the modeling part, and Lucrezia will show that uh, more in, 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 a, in the next session. Uh, but also, um, we are revamping even the monitoring part for the, our next release. So basically, it's almost uh, a brand new UI for uh, totally renewed. And the, the third part uh, is uh, the prediction the workload prediction is an, another important part of the product. In this uh, uh, set of uh, uh, features that make our product intelligent in the uh, management of uh, uh, the workloads, uh, we have added the recently with version 10 uh, the AI data advisor. So we are also uh, introducing features based uh, on the AI and machine learning to help uh, the product with operational scenarios. Moreover, uh, let's say that uh, the, since 9.5, the containerization of the uh, main components of the product, the dynamic workload console, the dynamic agents, uh, the dynamic workload console server, they are all containerized. And uh, this allows us to basically run everywhere. 
for at, uh, obviously this goes for the distributed components, but we still have uh, the important part on the mainframe. Also there, I'm not sure how, how many of you are using the mainframe solution, but uh, we are still investing uh, on that. We have a dedicated development team on, uh, on that. And you will see also in this presentation how we are enhancing the product for the future. So there are lots of com uh, things coming, a lo lot of investment uh, in our usual partnership with IBM. Obviously, please interrupt me anytime for questions or doubts, also from remote. Are there any plans for a new EMA report? A new? EMA. Yeah, well, actually, uh, that's a, an EMA plan. They, they normally do it every two years, so I expect a new one coming this year. Uh, we haven't started the work with uh, Dan Twing yet, but I think... Uh, that should be should happen very soon because normally what happens is that um, just around the summertime we perform an evaluation together with them and so this process will uh, will occur this during the summer and then uh, the new report should be delivered in November so we will have a new one hopefully with an improved uh, position for uh, workload automation. This is just a recap of uh, some of uh, the main feature. Uh, obviously, you know all of this, but just uh, um, as a, remind, a reminder of what we do, we orchestrate any kind of processes removing islands of automation and this is our um, usual uh, uh, picture this graphic with the uh, the balls with the different uh, domains of automation that are interconnected by workload automation and uh, its plugins obviously we uh, we orchestrate uh, with calendar based uh, that's the core um, Part of the product that is coming from a few decades ago, but also event-driven tasks, of course. We are starting to use AI to empower uh, the, the operational part of the product. Obviously, for now, there is no real plan to use AI to, to drive the orchestration. That's uh, something still, uh, let's say, in, in the future something that we could foresee for the future, but it's nothing coming soon. But uh, for operational scenarios with the product, uh, it can be very useful to uh, use AI and machine learning uh, um, technologies. Then self-service automation, uh, we have the, the new self-service catalog, uh, and we are empowering that with something uh, uh, to consider as an approval flow for 10.2, and that's a very important part of a strategy as well. And obviously, our value proposition is that we can connect. Uh, we are one of the best tools to uh, manage hybrid uh, workloads. We can work on premises, on cloud, deployed on cloud, and we can manage uh, workloads everywhere. So I won't spend too much time on this uh, because we will go through this again in the afternoon. But the, the automation hub now we have reached, uh, I think, 97 plugins on the on the automation hub, and we certainly will go beyond 100 uh, this year. It is like a, a target for this year. Uh, we get also a lot of requests, but. Uh, we are not just satisfying customer requirements. We are we have a strategy of uh, covering, uh, especially with cloud services, uh, for each uh, important, uh, most important cloud provider, full uh, scenarios where you can use a lot of different uh, uh, cloud services uh, uh, to implement uh, complex uh, scenarios and orchestrate them from workload automation gives a special value. 
Then we have many more uh, areas, the, uh, in, uh, domains of automation of applications where we integrate from file transfer, relational database, RPA. RPA is something where we are investing, maybe we haven't, we don't have yet so many customers uh, using this, leveraging these new plugins, but uh, we believe it's a very important area of uh, uh, innovation. Then ERP integrations, uh, um, ETL and big data and IT service management is also a strong part with uh, plugins for Jira and Symbol. Um, ServiceNow, Chef, and other tools that uh, are important in the area of um, IT automation. Okay, after this brief, hopefully brief introduction, I'm going to start to talk uh, about what we delivered uh, in, uh, in FixPack 1 uh, in December. So we already went uh, last year through the new contents of version 10, you will know that we had these three main uh, areas of uh, announcement, uh, the, the UI for the modeling part, then the uh, file transfer, the new file transfer capabilities, where you can use directly our agents to move files in, in, in your uh, IT environment. And also um, observability, the fact that now we can uh, be integrated with a lot of uh, observability tools, including uh, Instana, the IBM solution. We even uh, delivered uh, um, predefined dashboards for Instana on, uh, on the Automation Hub. So what we did uh, with FixPack 1 uh, that was delivered in uh, December was to uh, implement uh, um, a few customer requirements. Now, uh, they, they used to be called uh, RFEs. Now they're called IDS. So it's, uh, it's the new IBM terminology. Actually, we use that the same terminology also in HCL. So. And uh, so we implemented a, a couple of customer ideas uh, and uh, then uh, uh, some new important uh, announcement. So I can say that uh, with this fix pack, uh, we did some work in these four different areas, user experience, security, very important, uh, the announcements uh, we did on security uh, with the JWT token and the API keys, uh, installability, uh, that's also related in part, partially to the API keys, uh, I mean to the JWT token, and maintainability. So let's start with the two ideas implemented. This was a, a requirement. I think it was already available perhaps for FTAs, but I don't remember for sure. But um, basically this is for both uh, requirements are on Windows. So. Uh, the dynamic agents now can be uh, um, install, installed on uh, Windows uh, with uh, using uh, the local system account. So this uh, avoids the need of providing a specific user and to manage uh, the credentials of the TWS user to install the agent on Windows. And obviously, in, with this, uh, there is no password expiration. So this is a a requirement that has been there for, for a while that we satisfied uh, with fix pack one. Another requirement that had been there for a while was to allow uh, the dynamic agents installed on Windows to submit jobs uh, to start interactive programs that also was missing for the dynamic agents. And now it's available through a property that you can uh, uh, set in the, in the a job property. It's uh, on the very last line of the, of the slides. So th these are were two small uh, announcements, but uh, 
to customers uh, requirements that we finally implemented in uh, FixPack one. I also um, invite you to submit the idea. This is the, the link. I, I think you will have uh, these presentations after afterwards. So the, I put uh, in uh, some slides uh, some links that can be useful in this. This one is to submit ideas to IBM, new ideas, in case you missed uh, the, the conversion from the old tool to the new tool uh, in IBM. And uh, it's actually better to manage uh, ideas, requirements. What happens to the existing RFEs? They, they have been, all the, the ones that were in open status, of course, the ones that were closed or rejected, uh, uh, were not moved, but the old, uh, the, the ones that were open have been uh, moved uh, from uh, from the old system to the new system. That happened, I think, a couple of years ago. And can you see? Can you view other people's ideas using the ideas idea.com? Yes, you should be able, able to. Book for them. So yeah, no, no, no. Got yeah. Idea, just book it up. Yeah. Or or add your own, and then who gets to, all your friends? Who gets to reject the ideas? Me? <laughs> well, it's not really me. I I, I don't have the absolute power. <laughs> we we discuss, of course, and uh, we discuss with the development team. Formally, I'm in charge of uh, uh, changing the status, but uh, uh, we discuss. Normally, we reject them either when they've been. Uh, open for many years and we didn't have uh, any, uh, you know, it were low priorities, so we didn't do it for years, they cannot stay open for forever. Uh, so in that case, we ask us, customers to reopen them if they still consider it important. Uh, in some other cases, uh, we reject them when they are not uh, in line with our strategy. Not so many, I should say. But. Was there one that you had in mind, or just understanding? No, I keep recycling the the, uh, the number of characters for a, a job street. Uh, uh, but then you introduce folders, which is kind of it's not the same, but it's uh, it's, uh, it's kind of work around. Yeah. But you know, uh, change the length of the names. It, it's quite. Um, requires a very heavy effort uh, on both products distributed and mainframe. That's why we're not doing it. Because uh, basically you have to rewrite 50% um, of the product uh, and it's really heavy. Okay. Uh, because uh, it's not only changing the, the, line, uh, the, the length of the string, but it's uh, for the distributed, it's changing the, the symphony file uh, and perhaps uh, having problems to you know split records and so on. On, on the on the Z side, it's changing the Vision files and and can be uh, you know dangerous or uh, can bring performance issues. Uh, so and, and all the interfaces, of course. So it's a very heavy effort. But anyway, so that's that point. I've never had that uh, answer. So yeah, I didn't know it was so heavy. Uh, so we should um, change. We should, no, okay. we should give that feedback. Okay, I, um, this is a, a good comment for myself because I probably should uh, reply in a more complete way when I reject yeah, it. Rejects or close down. Mm. There should be a comment somewhere, uh, but um, maybe we can do better on that. Sure. Okay, so some of the new capabilities that we added to the fix pack. JWT token, so JSON Web token, it's a very important announcement because uh, it's a new way to secure the communication between uh, the workload automation server and, and, the, and the agents. And uh, the, this is, can be really helpful. Uh, sorry. So you can decide uh, whether you want to use uh, the, the WT token uh, when you install the dynamic agent. It's uh, an option. So 
So there is no more need for a mutual authentication, uh, exchange of certificates and so on. So there is a, a less overhead in the communication between server and the agent. And it's not uh, anymore required that the SSL pass through for cloud environments. So that's specifically, a, I guess, also for the usage of a containerized version of the cloud. So the, the JWT token, it's a, a new, more modern and efficient way to manage the security, a secure communication between uh, the server and the agents. How can you uh, decide to use it? it when you install the dynamic agent, you can use this option. Uh, the workload automation user, the workload automation password, and then the option JWT true. And this will uh, enable automatically uh, the JWT token uh, communication with the server. So what you get when you are using uh, J the JSON Web Token for uh, uh, the installation of the dynamic agent and uh, consequently for the communication with the server. You have long-term expiration token, so it's not uh, expiring uh, at the same uh, base of the certificates. You don't have uh, the issue of the certificate rotation. There is obviously secure communication among the components. You can revoke the tokens for each agent. So obviously you can manage that. It's not something fixed. And obviously you as well, you can generate new tokens when needed. This isn't available within for FTA, it's just dynamic agents. Mm, uh, I should check that. Probably yes, but I need to double check that. I can ask and let you know later. But I suspect, so since we're talking here only of dynamic agents. API keys is another uh, announcement in the area of security. So uh, the API key is also based on a JSON web token, and it's uh, a new way to authenticate uh, to the workload automation services. So you can use it for the command line, you can lose it uh, for REST APIs. Uh, it's uh, a simpler way than using certificates or uh, credentials. So you can use it uh, to authenticate with the common line. Uh, I guess both uh, the existing and the new common line, the orchestration common line. And also to authenticate uh, uh, for with the REST APIs. There's a specific uh, panel in the workload automation console where you can manage the API keys. So you can manage them. You can create new API keys. You can monitor the API keys expir expiration from this panel. So you know when it's going to expire and delete. API keys if you need to create new. So you, you have the manage, uh, you have uh, all the methods, methods to manage the API keys from the UI. Any question? One of the things when you generate the JWT token, it shows you what the token is and then says, 
once it's shown it to you, it never shows again. Just a, an abbreviation of it in the graphical user interface. So that, that's a useful thing that it actually says store this somewhere safe because the GWC doesn't tell you again for the tokens. So is there a default expiry on it? Or? No, when you create it, you can set all of them. Okay. So nothing by default? Nothing by no. default. Yeah. It doesn't expire. Okay. So the ones I've done are the ones that are expiring. I think someone down the line has to put it as well. Where these GWT stored. Are you able to repeat the question? Because it's question, where do the tokens get stored? Oh, I think it's a database. Yeah, it's managed by the directly by the product. Um, I think these two security announcements uh, are quite important. Uh, Although maybe not so fancy to you know to tell, but uh, improve a lot the way we manage security inside the product. But Michael, why did you do that? So API <laughs> tokens I get, but why the new method for the dynamic agent? What was wrong with the old way, and what will the problems be with the new way in managing it? I think that we had many issues, uh, um, problems that customer hit with the management of certificate. So that makes uh, that kind of process much easier. So that's basically the point. Uh, uh, the management of certif certificates is a little cumbersome while using the JSON Web Token, it's much easier and more flexible. And it's, it's useful for the traditional ways of using the command line, but on the new proposal, but again, you still need that FDA to talk to, whereas OCLI takes that away. And if you're working in just a dynamic agent environment, you don't have that alone as a other than on the master itself. Is that a rare thing to just to just to be in a complex of just dynamic agents and master? I think that's been quite rare. Though. Most people don't have an FTA, I imagine. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a mix, but yeah. if, if you're installing, say, in a, a containerized environment, Cont yeah, yeah, okay. then yeah. you have only you dynamic, dynamic agents available. So yes, correct. And also to set expectations, we are, we are not. Uh, deprecating yet FTAs. We don't have that intention for now, so uh, don't be worried about it, about that. But uh, obviously we are investing more in dynamic agents because we think they are more flexible and more uh, suited for the new technologies and new environments, especially the cloud environments. And uh, the orchestration common line, it's uh, another step in in that direction because uh, as uh, probably was mentioning uh, we were missing a, a common line uh, from the dynamic agents and with this uh, we start covering the gap uh, this is not exactly like conman so we don't cover all the functionalities uh, of common yet but uh, th there's a, a good a good part of it, at least in the management of jobs and job streams uh, in plan. So what is the orchestration common line? It's a new uh, remote common line. Uh, in, in this uh, first version, it manages uh, uh, jobs and job streams in plan, not only submission and monitoring, but all kind of actions. So uh, you can ro uh, remotely run commands on a server. It's automatically installed with dynamic agents since uh, fixed pack one. So you, you find it uh, reinstalled with the uh, dynamic agents, but can also be configured on personal devices. You, you can just download it on your laptop if you want to. So can be 
interesting, a different uh, scenario, uh, usage scenario. And is available for multiple plat platforms. So let's take a look at the syntax. It's a, uh, from the te technology point of view, is a, is based on Go. So how the syntax uh, is different from uh, Conman? Uh, the difference is here. Basically, when you invoke Conman, you start with Conman. When you invoke the orchestration command line, you start with OCLI, the, the, the acronym, and plan. Why using plan? Because uh, we would like in the future to extend it uh, uh, to also to the database, so to cover also what you can do with Composer. So that's uh, a strategy for the future and having uh, the, the word that uh, gives you the possibility to select plan is more for a strategic uh, vision of the command line. Where does OCLI uh, get its information from? So if you look at a command, mm -hmm. we have a number of our agents that pull status because we, we need to start looking at the jobs. Because mm -hmm. if we need to know that something's been updated, it's got to be pulled status. So where's OCLI getting its information from if you, should, if you do a short job or something like that? Is getting it from the server? It's a... Can you repeat the question for the people on the web? Oh, okay. So the, the question on the uh, orchestration command line is uh, uh, where the information uh, that is shown uh, as output of the comments uh, is coming from. So, and the, the answer is coming uh, from the plan exactly like uh, uh, with Conman. Uh, the difference is that in this case, it's using a uh, um, version of the REST uh, remote APIs to. Yeah, going back to the master. Yes. Local, yes, I understand that. It's using the local uh, FTA symphony. File, but uh, specify dynamic agent in the uh, configuration that it talks to uh, from OCLI. It can be a local one or it can be the uh, dynamic agent on the master. One. But that's, that's what I've done because I've got it on my laptop and it talks to the WA agent on, in a containerized environment. Yeah, but uh. Information. The, the information uh, are retrieved from the server. Yeah, from the database itself. Yeah. But you can make the request through a dynamic agent. Okay. So that's the executable OCLI and the plan is name of the component. Apart from that, the syntax uh, is just the same. So is the same as Kahneman. All the comments are uh, exactly the same. So we have to change only the, the first, the invocation part, let's say the first uh, part of the invocation. So you should be familiar with that. Now, self service catalog, I will be fast on this because uh, Lucrezia will go into that uh, with many more details. So just, uh, a couple of words. This is not completely a new feature because it used to exist, the self-service catalog. With this uh, fixed pack one, we integrated in the new workload designer, but also there have been uh, lots of announcements and we think uh, it's a very important uh, feature to help you work with self-service uh, scenarios. So perhaps, uh, uh, after the demo and the presentation from Lucrezia, you can consider if it can be useful in your environment to manage some scenarios, okay? We are doing also more for this because uh, in uh, the next release, we are providing a kind of a proof of flow, so the possibility to um, have in the workflow that is defined uh, uh, as a, uh, for the service to um, stop the execution uh, and ask for an approval. We, we, she will talk more about that later. Um, 
Okay, so uh, let's move to the second part of the presentation. I have uh, some uh, gen general information around the, the portfolio of products, and then I will go a little more into the Z part uh, of the portfolio. Um, are there any uh, Z customers here? Okay, a couple, good. So this is uh, the timeline of our roadmap. We have delivered in the fourth quarter of 2022, the fixed pack one. And uh, we delivered also in the first quarter, uh, fixed pack two uh, with uh, some announcements, uh, uh, specifically the support of uh, uh, Thread at uh, version 9 and uh, a new version also of IBM I. In May, so in the next days, we will uh, publish also Fixed Pack 3 that will include uh, the run cycle preview. It was missing in the model, in the new modeling. I mean, not really missing, but you have to switch to the old uh, modeling part. Now we have introduced it in the new um, workload designer. And in July, we plan to deliver version 2, 10.2. Uh, we have a, a few uh, features that I would talk more about it, the new monitoring, the set service catalog approval flow. Uh, OK, first of all, this will be only for distributed. We don't plan to have a, a 10.2 this year on, on the mainframe. On one side, because we think it's too too soon for having a, a new release also for the mainframe, but also because uh, we want to plan some uh, important uh, contents to change uh, release uh, on, on the mainframe. And on the on the Z side, while we are changing the, the model, uh, the development model in 10.2 on, on distributed, moving to continuous delivery. We don't really need to change anything on the, on the mainframe side because uh, the fact that we can deliver fixes and, in, and uh, new features uh, with PTFs basically already, already give, give us uh, the possibility to do some continuous delivery. So we don't need to change the process on the mainframe side. And we don't have enough contents to uh, go with a 10.2 this year. We will deliver new PTFs with the announcements. While we probably plan a, a, a 10.2 on Z uh, towards the end of next year in 2024. What changes with continuous delivery on 10.2? Probably we will stay on 10.2 for a while. But uh, we will uh, uh, we plan to have uh, new deliveries every four months, and we will change the modification level for that. But I have a slide talking about the changes with for the continuous delivery, so we will talk more about that. And you can see that after that, we basically have the idea of delivering a new features uh, with cycles of four months, more or less. So. And we were already using continuous delivery for the automation hub. Okay. For ZOS. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me. Not tied me. to the product releases, uh, the, the plugin, the, the delivery of the plugins. And we have uh, also here showed what we have in plan for the next uh, talk deliveries. But we'll talk more about that in the afternoon. There's so many releases a year. How, how about that? Is that, is that going to shift support for Yes. I will talk more about that. I have a slide for explaining a little bit. So question for that, that basic concept uh, that you should stay you should try to stay a little more in uh, in uh, in sync with the deliveries. Not exactly at the latest level, but uh, date a little more frequently to get uh, uh, fixes uh, more, you know, in a faster way and so on. Consider that uh, 
part of this uh, is because um, or at this point in time, many products uh, in IBM are using continuous delivery. Uh, Liberty does, uh, uh, I think also DB2, many products are using continuous delivery model. But also there's the problem of the security patches. So we have very frequently new security issues and we need to provide fixes very, very soon. So if we don't have a, a way to provide uh, frequent updates, we could even uh, have the need to, to ship, uh, you know, new fix packs between uh, uh, one release and the next, and it's only four months. So technology security is going fast and we need to keep up with that. No problem. But we'll talk more about that in a moment. Let's see some uh, contents of uh, 10.2. It's not going to be, you know, uh, a release with uh, so many new features. But uh, also this is something that is changing. Instead of having, uh, you know, a new release that changes everything, you have uh, some new features. And then after four months, some more new features, but not necessarily uh, um, something that disrupt completely. So after 10.2, a new release will be needed uh, when there will be a change in infrastructure. So when the uh, the upgrade uh, to uh, a new release uh, is more complicated than uh, installing a fix pack, than upgrade. So that may be because for uh, technical reasons, we need to change something in, in infrastructure, hopefully not so often. And, uh, and this is what happened between uh, um, 9.4 and 9.5 actually, when we needed to change the infrastructure, the prereqs and so on. But if we don't need to change that, we don't need a 10.3, a 10.4, we just change the modification level and ship some new features every four months, maybe smaller packages. There's a question on the screen. Yes. Oh. Chris. Mitchells, if you're releasing 10.2 for results, what will determine the end of service for 9.5? So we are not uh, releasing a 10.2 for, for, for ZOS for mainframe. Uh, so, at this moment, uh, we don't have plans to uh, put end of support on uh, 9.5. So uh, we will uh, talk about that and decide about that uh, when we deliver a 10.2. So for now, no plans to EOS 9.5 uh, um, on Z. So the, the first important part, it's like we changed the modeling in 10.1. We are changing the monitoring of the, in the UI on the, on the dynamic workflow console, revamping completely the monitoring views, providing a tree view for business visibility based on folders. Also, we are going to deliver a new version, updated version of the AI data advisor component that we deliver with Temple One. Then this part that is called the human in the loop workflows is actually uh, quite important because uh, uh, gives you the possibility to um, interrupt your the execution of your job streams workflows as you want to call them with uh, some uh, external approval. We are publishing uh, two new plugins, two new job types uh, for ServiceNow and Jira. So, uh, for example, what you can do, uh, let's say that you add dynamically a job stream to the plan or, uh, and you want to uh, have an approval before it starts ex executing. And so you can put as first job of the job stream, 
a, a job that will open a ticket for service now to service now and we'll wait for its completion, its closure before moving on. So you have the job stream added to the plan, but it won't really start until it gets approved. The ticket is closed, uh, the approval flow is closed, and the execution continues. And you, and you will be able to do that with ServiceNow and Jira. These are two pretty popular uh, ITSM tools. So we starting with this, but obviously we are open to increase the number of tools uh, we integrate with. So this is another important, uh, and obviously we'll have a particular um, mapping on the self-service catalog. Um, something more is also in the area of the of plugins is uh, the RESTful plugins. Uh, important enhancement of it. Uh, also, this has been, um, let's say, needed for a long time. Currently, when you use the RESTful plugin, uh, it, it issues uh, the REST API, but then you need to uh, define another job to monitor uh, the success of the API call. Instead, here we are going to add uh, the the monitoring part instead in, in to, into the same job. So that's uh, a, an important announcement. Yes. Yeah. So there's a question. The service now job type, is that just for TWSD or for Z as well? It's also for Z. For both. Okay. Yes, it's for both. Uh, all the plugins are uh, for both. Uh, there is no specific uh, implementation that is related to uh, the engine parts. So adding uh, the tracking into the uh, RESTful plugin uh, is a very important announcement. Uh, customers will be able to uh, save the definitions of a lot of jobs that are used currently to pull, you know, uh, the result of the API. We we will do that internally. And also we are adding uh, the patch HTTP method to the RESTful plugin and the support for uh, uh, beer authentication. So these are the main contents of uh, 10.2. So not, uh, let's say, maybe the, the most important impact is on the dynamic workflow console for the monitoring new views, but uh, in general, we are not uh, disrupting the, the core of the product for this in the list. The uh, AI data advisor, um, that will remain as container only. Yes. Could you repeat? Yes. What? Question. Oh, okay. Uh, the question from Probal was if uh, the AI data advisor component will be still available only in its containerized version, and the answer is yes. Okay, I think I spoiled uh, this slide, the token uh, on the previous one, so probably we can skip this one. Uh, this is a uh, few more elements of what changes uh, in the AI that advisor. Basically, uh, they are changing uh, the um, The open source uh, tool used for the A part, so it's going to be profit. Uh, maybe it's called the new profit, uh, the new one. I don't remember the details, but uh, there will be more features. Uh, so it's an improved uh, way to use the to provide the predictions uh, and to do the analysis, uh, uh, faster training. Uh, easier to extend and some improvements on the uh, AI that advisor UI where we provide some analytics on the on the uh, workstations and jobs execution. 
few words on the continuous delivery. So, uh, new, um, we always have been using uh, these four digits uh, um, versioning. What changes is that uh, uh, currently we're never using uh, the, the, the third digit, it's always zero. So, on tempo one, we have tempo one zero one, tempo one zero two, tempo one zero three. Uh, we change the fourth digit when we have fixed packs. Now, for new releases, we will change uh, in continuous delivery. We will change the third digit when we don't have a, really a new release, but we are in continuous delivery on 10.2. That's uh, the frequency should be for months, more or less, let's say. We will ship in these uh, new uh, releases. Uh, both new functions sometimes there will be more content so sometimes there will be smaller content but uh, new functions and always maintenance so apers so a faster say, cycle to for apers because normally we we don't ship a fixed pack every four months and that's also something needed for uh, uh for security updates for security updates, uh, if really necessary, we will ship a fixed pack in the middle between two next two releases. If there is, uh, if there are urgent fixes uh, to uh, to deliver, but that should be the only cause for a fixed pack. Uh, there is a change in the EOS model um, currently. Uh, every release is supported for th three years plus two. Uh, in uh, with continuous delivery, the standard model is, is uh, two years plus one, but this is just the minimum. So if we plan to stay for a while on 10.2 in continuous delivery, this might be much more than two years. So it doesn't need to be two years. This is the minimum. Excuse me? Yeah, I understand it's three plus one, isn't it? On continuous delivery, no, also two plus two, two plus one. Yes, no, but historically on. Yeah, on it was three plus two. Yeah. So this is the, more the standard of for continuous delivery. My what? Thought, yes. Um, I presume, just to make it clear right now, we can go a direct upgrade from 9.5 to 10.2. Yes, like it's, it's the same as uh, moving to tempo one. Yes. Okay. Marco, there's a couple of questions in the chat. Okay. Uh, is there continued delivery a long term support version for 10.x? Maybe. Yeah, it's a way to do to You can see that. We probably plan to stay on 10.2 until we don't need uh, you know, to change something. Uh, beginning the infrastructure. And then there's a second one, I guess the question is for Z, are you moving to continuous delivery or is that still three plus one? No, we are not changing the model for 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 the Z product. We didn't we didn't think it was necessary. Okay, so Z is still three plus one. Yes. Okay. Three actually three plus two. Two. Okay. Okay. So uh, what changes in the support? So that's maybe the most uh, delicate part. Uh, we, we will provide uh, normally fixes, uh, in particular I fixes, on, the, on two uh, levels of maintenance, the latest and the latest minus one. So obviously, if you have a, a, a severity one blocking, uh, uh your environment uh, whatever level you are we you will get a fix but uh, that's only for uh, blocking pro problems otherwise you should be at uh, at the uh, at least at the latest levels minus one so you should plan to update more frequently to upgrade uh, 
you see uh, to new releases more frequently with this model you have time to you know to get prepared for that because temple one will stay on its uh, uh, three plus two uh, model we are not changing the past let's say but with 10.2 on distributed only, I repeat, to be sure that everybody understand, we will move to continuous delivery with this uh, new model. And then obviously we'll see what happens on, you know, what, what are the feedbacks from customers, how it goes, uh, if it helps customers to be, to stay more at the latest level of, pro of the product and uh, at the latest, latest level of security patches. So it will always be backwards compatible, won't it? So, for example, if we upgrade our distributed environment to 10.2, mm -hmm. uh, Z environment to 10.1, yeah. Yes. And uh, 10.2 dynamic work console obviously will work with the 10.1 engine. Yeah. The only point uh, uh, is that uh, there will be no support for the new monitoring in the UI for Z. So it will use the old monitoring uh, uh, until probably we deliver a 10.2 on Z because we need to change new features on the engine, on the Z engine before we can support the new monitoring. There's a question, I think Mike answered at the end of support plans for distributed 9.5 and is there a fixed pack 7 coming for 9.5? Uh, about the fix back, I think it is there is one. Uh, I should double check, but I, I think I've heard about it. And on the um, on nine point five uh, 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 end of support, um, we will start probably announcing it uh, uh, at the end of this year, and will not surely be before end of twenty twenty four. The question then about nine four seven if it's available. If you're at nine five four, let's say nine five four currently, is it worthwhile going to nine five seven or should you not really go to ten point one? It's the same difference, is it not? The same process is in yes. either way, isn't that? Yes. It might be as well a, a good uh, idea to move to ten point one. Yeah. 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 Uh, you, you all need to think about moving faster to new releases because uh, um, it's also the way we provide uh, fixes and uh, uh, security patches and all that stuff. So uh, it's not like uh, years ago when you could stay for two or three years on the same level. And we are not allowed anymore to do that. You, you say that. But some of the some of the customers have been here and for the online have got big estates and it takes a long, long time to upgrade. I understand. You're that. saying you need to be at the latest level is very easy to say, but in a in a in the, I understand. In the real world, yeah. gents, would you say? Yeah, definitely. It's very, very hard to keep up with the latest stuff, the latest software. Yeah, I think everyone needs to think about the impact of this, the, mm -hmm. the changes and the frequency. But then again, uh, there are uh, your um security compliance uh rules in your company that force you to to upgrade to a level where those security uh, f uh, problems are fixed so it's not only something that we push you to do it's something that is coming from the real world uh, I, I, I agree with that i also think yeah no, i understand I that. the agenda of we now have to comply with to you know the minus one or the minus two version below we don't just sit there all day doing nothing we're actively no i understand environments working very hard and just to keep the lights running obviously if uh doing this you find that, that there is something that we can implement to help that process you should let us know because uh we know that it's a burden but uh we also understand that uh, it's something that needs to happen and uh, we want to help you to. So, so I guess there's a chicken and egg. So if your company says we need to be security patched and Marco delivers it in a fixed bank quickly, you've got a problem because you're going to need to get current. Or 
or say to your security people, we're, we're going to stay back level because it's too big a job. How do you square that away with your organisation? I think the threat ones they're trying to corporate crossings. Mm -hmm. I think we need to be more agile. Yeah. I mean, the security yeah. updates, will they only come within fixed packs or will they come with new versions? So, for example, if we're on 10.1 yeah. and you've got a security fix, will only come in with 10.2? Are we going to have to upgrade to 10.1? No, 10.1 until it's uh, supported, you get security fixes also yeah. or not supported yeah. the releases. So I didn't mean to interrupt. Okay. A question around DWC. Um, so I said technology and security because mm -hmm. that's about a nine, five miles back. I think so. We should support at least a couple of releases. So, do you know? Uh, I'm not sure about this, but we should support. Yeah, we can we can double check. Okay. Uh, I'm a little behind schedule, so I still have uh, a few minutes. Not so many, like ten minutes. Uh, okay, and then we'll take a break. Okay. Um, this is the link to provide feedback on the, you know, DWC versus web admin. Please uh, try to to use it if you are a, a customer of web admin, because we want to get uh, as many feedbacks as possible and and see then and perform an analysis and see what we can do about it. I think Nigel, you're the only one that provided feedback. Uh, we, we are a very big, mainly web admin user type of site. And yes, I have DWC, and yes, I know the differences between DWC and our wonderful web admin uh, UI. And to me, there's some functionality that we could transfer from web admin mm. to DWC to enhance the DWC. So, uh, and the purpose of this service to collect the, this kind of feedback. I think we need to regulate it. Yeah, we need we need a regular, yeah, we need we need a regular meeting or so regular strategy for that kind of process as well. Mm -hmm. that, because it is an important process, the front end. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you just know what that means. I think behind the government, we need to DWC as well. Number of issues. Was it peerless? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a new monitoring <laughs> and ten point two. Does that have any yeah, so aspects as look like web admin? I'm not sure because I'm not such uh, an expert of web admin. So maybe the the new monitoring is, is better than the old one. Is as better more usability, but uh, I need to understand myself. What are you know what, what you like so much in web admin that is different mm -hmm. on the, the the enemy workflow. And the slide you showed a minute ago, you said it's yeah. a link. But it's a link. An yeah. Address. If you if you click this link, right. you go to a form that you can fill with your comments and your uh, requirements. We'll do that. And uh, and our uh, UX designers are waiting for this. What about things like the Yeah. Uh, December two thousand three, right? Doesn't mean that it's been running. Yeah. Yeah. I've asked the question. Okay. We, we have some time to react, but we need, uh, you know, to work on this. Mm -hmm. So now a few minutes on the, on the Z side. This is uh, some kind of roadmap, and then I have a few slides specifically on one topic, uh, which is for the future, but it's very interesting and I want to share. So um, there are announcements in on AI, in particular, um, there is a, a, an AI influenced uh, ZOS job scheduling project ongoing where we are cooperating with the Z systems division of IBM. And I will talk uh, about details on a few details on that uh, in the next slides. Uh, there's a new tool provided by IBM to edit and work with JCLs, it's called IBM uh, JCL Expert. And we are going to have an integration with the Z, especially on the Dynamic Workflow Console and ISPF panels, to invoke this tool when you want to save a JCL. Obviously, if you use this tool, um, there are announcements. We are 
implementing also to simplify the migrations from competitive uh, tools, but that's not for you. Uh, modernization. Uh, we want to announce uh, the dynamic workload console for some uh, specific use cases on Z, like uh, possibly I have required requirements uh, since a long time in my list, uh, talking about, uh, you know, have a supporting a LTP on, uh, on the dynamic workload console or more scenarios that currently are not available. So those are in our, in our radar. The self service catalog has been implemented also for Z. So all the, all the, that you will see later on the self service catalog from Lucrezia will be also for the senior uh, users. The automation app integrations are all also for the mainframe customers. If you're using the centric agents, you can use all the plugins, just the same. Uh, another part to support uh, in the future, the new monitoring coming out on the 10.2 with uh, on the dynamic workload console, we will need to introduce the mirroring also for Z. And that will also uh, bring uh, a relief for performances of uh, 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 ZOS users on, uh, on the dynamic workload console. Currently, we have a bottleneck on the controller because all the requests come to the server to the same controller that is doing everything. And uh, implementing the mirroring will uh, really, uh, you know, we down, uh, download, uh, not download. We really uh, decrease the load of the controller uh, because uh, some of the monitoring queries will go directly to a database rather than going through the controller and accessing the list of files. So we have to implement something like that also on the this side. In uh, SP1, uh, we implemented uh, also one requirement for the, the support for SAF keying on TCP or PTS. So this was uh, the RACF way to support uh, the security, the RACF certificate. So we, we, that was only available for HTTP communication. Now it's also available for TCP IP communications. Um, and uh, in SP2, so the one that will be delivered in July at the same time of 10.2 for uh, for distributed, we uh, will have uh, the same integration with service. Uh, we will, will have a new integration specific with service now. It is different from the job type that we are providing uh, uh, as a plugin. Uh, this is more similar to what uh, is you can do now with the event driven workload automation on distributed. So uh, the job type for a service now, what, what you can do is uh, at a certain point you submit a job that opens a ticket uh, to service now then you can decide whether you want to wait or not for the completion of the ticket but it's a job this integration is co is completely different is when you when a certain event occurs on the controller so if you have a job ending in error or if you have an alert you can customize what kind of uh, events. You can open automatically a ticket to service now. So classical scenario, a job ends in error, you can open a ticket to, to service now directly. So this is has been a, a requirement from customers for a while. And this will come in July on top of 10, one, uh, temple one with an S, with a PTF. Uh, also, we are going to provide the JCL library uh, dynamic allocation for job submission, which means uh, if you want to submit dynamically a job, you can decide to get it from another library, not from uh, the uh, what is in the job library conc concatenation. And the, the job library will be automatically uh, dynamically allocated when you submit the job. So. You can specify with a user field that we obviously there will be documentation on how to do it, a specific value for a user field, and then the library where we should get the JCL. 
so we can be more flexible, especially for dynamic scenarios. You can change the JCL and get it from another library that is not in the concatenation. Like it? Yeah, yeah. We've uh, taken one of our instances on the mainframe where almost every couple of weeks they're asking us to change the uh, JCL library allocations and put it, move it up to concatenation or whatever. Yeah. So if we can give our users access to uh, that, that particular parameter, then yeah, that would be helpful. Okay, good. Are these in, are they enhancements that apply for ten point four? Um, just thinking. So, um, you mentioned the lack of a long term plan on DWC. So that's a real blocker was using mm -hmm. DWC for. Not yet uh, for ten point one. It's something that uh, we have in the roadmap, but we don't have a planned date yet. I, I don't see that uh, this year, certainly, unfortunately. Um, very quickly on this, this is a project we are doing with uh, ZOS, uh, the, the IBM Z division. So what they are doing is to uh, add to the ZOS AI capabilities. So they are planning to add an AI engine based on the metric. And they want to use it to optimize the execution of the jobs on the on the mainframe. For doing that, they need cooperation of the job scheduling tools. Because we have information that the system doesn't have. And with cooperating the job scheduling part tool and the operating system, JAS, WLM, uh, with these AI features, we believe that, that in the next two or three years, we can optimize the execution of the workload on, on the OS, optimize the usage of resources and so on. So it's a very interesting project. Well, I thought there was a question. Can the GCL library dynamic allocation be blocked, for example, in production environments? Uh, you have to uh, allow it uh, by specifying uh, the alternate library in uh, in the oper at the operation level. So if you don't specify that, that will not happen. So the the problems that uh, they want to uh, to solve using AI is, uh, you know, what jobs should be run next, and this is not at our level; it's at system level. Okay, it's Jess. What uh, job should be run next? What system should be, a job be run on? How can we uh, balance in the best way resources uh, uh, on the Sysplex? Can the systems in the Sysplex anticipate what is coming and react appropriately? So it's a very um, um, interesting uh, idea to apply AI to predict what's going to happen on the system and react properly uh, using historical information uh, stored in SMF records and so on. So they want to apply AI analysis to all the, the information that is stored on the system and be able to uh, have a better behavior of the system uh, when, when it's uh, about uh, choosing where you want to submit a job or uh, allocating resources properly and uh, select the next job to run. To do that, uh, they need uh, to cooperate with the, schedule, to the job scheduler. Uh, currently, this is uh, the picture. The job scheduler puts the jobs on the just reader so uh, these are in a, in a queue for the job, the just uh, uh, subsystem, and then they have they have uh, initiators job system. Uh, um, the just has initiators that are assigned to the jobs that starts execution. Okay. What uh, uh, just is missing, the system is missing, is the job identity. So you can name a job with the same, you know, using the JCL name, that's the job name, 
but that doesn't mean that uh, two two instances of the same jobs are really the same job in the sense that uh, you can define the same job in different operations in our in your applications job streams and being uh, really from a, a logical point of view two different instances of the same job there are, i've seen many times in uh, customer environments uh, the same job name used in uh, in many different applications. So although uh, uh, Jess and the system, they have only the job name, eight characters, but we can identify that job as part of a specific job stream, a specific workflow. So that's one point why they need job scheduling tools. Then also, uh, all the statistics about the job execution should be collected and associated to a specific job. And if we do that, Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, so that's the point of, of relationship between a job scheduling tool and the system. And this is what we intend to do. The job scheduler will pass some information at job submission when uh, uh, writing the job, the, the JCL to the internal leader of JES. Some uh, uh, information to identify the job specifically, okay? So this will be uh, stored in, in, the, uh, in the scheduler uh, databases. Then we will collect also information from SMF records uh, when the job ends and store that also in uh, our databases so that we can have these cycles of information that are provided to the system. To... And based on that, the system will use uh, AI algorithms to optimize the execution, the execution of the workload. We will start with the first PTF delivered at the end of this year, we will support using some symbols to provide the information to the to JAS. We will provide uh, for example, we will start uh, giving the possibility to submit jobs uh, before uh, they are ready to they are ready to start. But for example, if they have a, a, a time dependency, okay. So if they have no other dependency than the time dependency, we can submit them in advance to JAS with uh, using this so sys old until symbol, providing the time dependency. So the system will be responsible for waiting for the time dependency. And in this way, submitting jobs early to just earlier, we can provide information of, about the resources needed and just can already start optimizing the execution of the workload. So it's a tight cooperation. We will start providing this information to JAS and we plan to go along with the, uh, also ZOS releases that will provide the, these capabilities. They will, it will take uh, two, a couple of years to complete this, this part, but uh, it's a very interesting uh, project uh, of announcement of the mainframe using AI. That will be, the AI engine will be in the mainframe, it will not be something external. So it's very, um interesting okay that's all i just want to recall you the transpire development program this is very important for us to if you participate because you can provide feedback while we are developing functionalities so i put you uh, for you in the in the in the presentation the link uh, to contact us and we will be happy to uh, then invite you to the sessions that we give uh, 
regularly on uh, what we are doing and getting early feedback is very important to us. Okay, done. Sorry for oh, questions from Des. What if the job submitted early then gets amended in TWS or JCL and or gets marked complete or time changed, etc. Okay, so uh, the, the point is uh, someone wants to change the time dependency after we submitted the job. Uh, well, uh, this will be an option uh, that can be configured. Also, obviously, if you decide to leverage this option, uh, you know that if you change the time dependency after the job has been submitted, that will not be reflected. Okay, so sorry for 